Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and I just got back from NABT's National Conference. It's the 75th year that they've brought together biology teachers from across the country to learn from one another. When I was trying to describe this to my students before I left, they couldn't believe that such a conference even exists, but it does, and it was amazing. The first thing I did when I got there is I gave a keynote address. The title was Lessons of a Half-Life, and I talked about the lessons that I'd learned during my half a life of teaching. I'll try to organize those thoughts into a short video and I'll post it up here on YouTube. This is a picture I took when I was done and everybody knew what that meant. I learned from so many great teachers when I was there. This is a panel that was set up and they were talking about their AP biology classes. There's about 120 years of experience right here. Um, and, and the thing I took away is that each of these panelists were um, different. Their classes would be totally different, but they would all be amazing. And you can even see that right here. We've got a self-knitted scarf that has a double helix on it. And so um, one of the other things I got to do was listen to experts. I listened to a, a, a PowerPoint by Eugenie Scott. She's an anthropologist and she works for NCSE. Um, and they really have been defending the teaching of evolution and climate change in the classroom. And she, and, and she really laid the history of that out and the role of NABT in that. Um, it was amazing and it also was a really good PowerPoint. What I mean by that is when you're giving a PowerPoint, you shouldn't put all your notes up there and just read it. You should show them the documents, show them the images, and if you want to have the notes to yourself, then that's okay. But they're not for your audience. I learned so much at this conference. Um, I didn't know that there was a famous Norwegian zoologist named Ditlef Rustad, and in 1927, he pulled up this weird fish. I'd always heard of these ice fish that have these antifreeze proteins in it. But the thing that I didn't really grasp is that they don't have blood in the normal sense. They don't have red blood. They have clear blood. And you can actually look through their body. It's somewhat translucent. You can see their organs. You can see their brain. And in this little activity, what we were doing is we were adding ice crystals to these different types of blood. And we're seeing that in the red blood, uh, we're seeing formation of the crystals and the clear, we're not. And so you learn all of these cool lessons that you could bring back into your classroom. You also see some of the cutting ed, uh, edge scientific uh, technology that's out there, uh, be it textbooks or modeling or computer software or microscopes. I, I took this picture and I think it's kind of cool. This is the Pearson. Pearson is a publisher and they publish almost all of the textbooks out there uh, or a lot of the textbooks out there. But they're next to a place called OpenStax and OpenStax is an open source um, kind of a project. I think they're working with Rice University and what they're doing is putting together free open textbooks and they even gave you a flash drive with a bunch of biology, chemistry, sociology textbooks that are on it. And it was the quality is getting better. I've looked at some of these over the last few years and they're getting better and better and better. And it's, it's not going to be long before we're just going to get those textbooks, I think, for free. Um, since we were in Atlanta, Georgia, we got to visit the Georgia Aquarium, which is amazing when it opened up. It was the largest aquarium in the world, and I'm really proud of this picture. I took of a couple of fellow biology teachers when we were looking at the aquarium. Got a few videos that I thought you might enjoy. This is me sticking my hand in and playing with the anemones. They do a good job of letting you play with a lot of the uh, uh, organisms in this aquarium. They have these little nidocytes, and so they would stick in your finger. Uh, but our skin is thick enough that it didn't really poison me at all. Um, like any good aquarium, they had some amazing jellyfish exhibits, and you could see them. Uh, I could watch that for hours as they swim around. But the most amazing thing they had at the Georgia Aquarium is they have not only one whale shark in a giant tank, um, and you can see it right here, that all these other fish would like swim underneath it and around it, but they had four whale sharks in this one tank. Um, they said that they had sent them over here uh, by UPS when they were much smaller. And to see these whale sharks in this giant aquarium just kind of moving around, it's the largest fish on the planet. It's just, it's just, Amazing, and it opens up that curiosity in, in, that's innate in all teachers. And so I had an amazing time at the conference, but when you reflect on it, the one thing that I took away was the friends that I made there, the other teachers that I, I met, um, the friendships that were formed, the ideas that were shared. Um, that's what conferences are really about. It's getting together and, and meeting with other people. And so I hope that was helpful. <laughs>